Now we have our contentful environment set up and we have our API keys, we need a better solution for storing our API keys. For this, we can use environment variables, but what are environment variables? So environment variables are project-wide variables where we store secret information such as API keys and secrets. These files have a .env extension. So let's start by creating our own. So if we go to our project, create a new file, .env, .env.development. Once this file is created, we want to add it to our git ignore. So let's say all .env dot star or dot env. So now that is ignored. The reason we do this is because the information is a secret. We don't want to store it in our source control. If you're at a company with many different developers or your repository is public, you don't want people seeing your live API keys. Otherwise they could steal that and start hacking your blog. That's why we use the dot env files and they will only ever be on your local machines. We'll be discussing how to use the secrets from these .env files on Netlify when deploying your website in a future video. So stay tuned for that. Let's add our first environment variable. To do so, we need to go to our .env.development and we need to first write Gatsby underscore. Usually there's an additional bit of configuration to set up environment variables in a project, but as we're using Gatsby, it does this for us as long as we use the Gatsby underscore prefix. So, for our first one, we'll call it Gatsby underscore test. And we want to set that equal to the string of Kieran for now. To access these in our project, we can access them in any file now. So if we go to our pages index.js, so our home page, let's console log that environment variable. To log an environment variable, it attaches itself to the process dot environment and then the name that we assigned it. So that would be Gatsby test. Whenever we edit or add a new environment variable, we would have to restart the whole process as it puts it through when it's building. So if we do npm, npm start, we should now start the project and it should inject our environment variables in. Once that's completed, we want to go to Chrome. I'm going to hit F12. And I'm just going to refresh and you can see here that it's returning Kieran. So that's the environment variable that we passed in. So as an example, I'll change this to Kieran Venison and it shouldn't change in the UI as we'd have to rebuild the project. So you see here, it still says Kieran. So to see the new and updated one, we'd have to run npm start again once we've changed it. So once this is restarted again, we'll be able to go back to Chrome and see that it now says Kieran Venison. So if we go back, refresh, you should now say Kieran Venison. Perfect. So that's our environment variables working. One thing to note is sometimes you're not sure what you've got on your environment variables, so you'll just delete that off and see what's on the process.env. This will always be blank. And that is deliberate. So if you're looking for them, you'd have to look in here and make sure you are putting the name in there. So if I put the name in, you'll see it is actually Karen Venison, even though it says it's an empty object. So don't let that throw you off. It ca it's caught me out a few times. Now we have that working. Let's just delete our test one. And we'll put Gatsby underscore contentful API. And in here, we want to store our contentful API key, which we saved earlier. So I saved that into my notes. So I'll copy that. I no longer need that note, so I can delete it close that and I want to paste my API key into here. So if I give that a save, kill that terminal as I don't need it anymore. And that's all we need to know for setting up environment variables. So now we have access to our contentful API key on our local machine. Now we have a place to store our secrets. We can continue on with the course. Thanks for watching. If you're liking the course, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.